Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew. We're talking about graphics thermal yet again. Let's get to it. This is the third video in a series. If you haven't seen the other two yet, I would suggest those. Check out the cards. We have two seemingly identical objects, and just to show you there's nothing up my sleeve, I'm going to move them directly adjacent to each other. You can see here that the flex sizes are the same, and that the objects themselves are indeed the same shape and size. However, these objects are not the same as far as the graphics thermo is concerned. Let's turn on the reporting and see what happens when we delete each one. You can see we're starting at 8% graphics thermo for the scene. We'll delete the one on the right and thermo goes down to 3%. We can conclude one of two things. First, the objects were not identical. If they were, the thermo would not have changed. Second, the one on the right costs more than the one on the left. And I think you saw what I just did. The object on the left is two sculpts and has a graphics cost of about 3%. The way that it works is that each sculpt is bounded by an invisible box and that box determines flex size and therefore ultimate graphics cost. The sculpts on the left individually have a smaller bounding box and the void under them is not included in that space whereas the one on the right, the box does contain the negative space. It's not that the larger bounding boxes automatically cost more, but if the flex sizes are the same as a smaller bounding box, the cost will be greater. What you're looking at now is an experiment to determine the effect of color and shape on the cost of sculpture. I made all of these the same way by surface snapping a smear to a logically rotated sphere. If that made no sense to you, watch my video about using logic in sculpting. All of these have the same cost, except for the smaller one here on the right, which is smaller because some of the edits were smaller. One of these is the same color, same size edit. Another is different shades of the same hue, same size edit. Another is all sorts of colors, same size edit. And the last is all sorts of colors, varying edit size. And this one is a weird lady's head, and that's what happens when Dreams interrupts a graphics thermo experiment. The main takeaway is that the surface area of the sculpture is what matters. If you're just using stamp or smear edits, the shape cost will be greater than the cost of the color, so feel free to use your color tumbler. However, color cost can exceed shape cost, especially when you already have a lot of stamp and smear edits generating underlying color cost. Most people don't know this, but your spray paints are not actually on the surface of the sculpture. Spray painting generates a field of color that your sculpture shape edits just happen to be living in. What I've done here is drag the surface out of the color field and you can see it's completely white now and I will then drag it back through the field in real time. This is all in sculpture mode, by the way. What you should be getting from this is that the color information from spray paints is not just what you see on the surface. It can be much larger with blending and changes in opacity included. It takes a lot of color information to overcome the shape information, but it can be done. And once your color cost is greater than your shape cost, you can't reduce it no matter how much you use the Sculpture Detail tool. So I want to give you definitive proof that your graphics thermal shape cost is the cost of the surface area combined with the size of the flex. In some ways this may seem obvious since flex get larger as we use the Sculpture Detail tool to reduce graphics thermal cost. But let me show you something that may not be so obvious. What I'm doing here is smearing a surface snapped pointy pyramid to a sphere that is rotating by logic. The intent is to generate as much surface area as possible. When I get done with that you can see we have plenty of nooks and crannies that we need to cover with flex. And when we increase sculpture detail as far as possible we have a graphics thermal cost of 26%. However, for 26% at this size, this sculpture is not looking super sharp. I'm going to make a similarly sized sculpture at about the same graphics cost so we can investigate. After increasing this cube all the way, we have a total of 50% for the scene. The crazy sphere is 26%, so they're pretty close in cost. 
Now if we look at them close up, the cube has smaller flex despite costing a little bit less and having a bounding box that's about the same size. That's because the surface area of the sphere is far greater. In order to cover that larger surface area at around the same cost, the engine must then increase the size of the fleck. This is because the shape cost of a sculpture is essentially a measure of the amount of flex needed to cover it. One thing that's been a source of confusion is the impact of positive and negative shapes, and I have to admit I'm guilty of spreading certain information that I thought was correct. I thought negative shapes cost more. We'll see that probably isn't the case, at least to any meaningful degree. I'm building identical shapes. One is made entirely of positive edits. The other will have a hole punched in it with a negative edit. Because the cost of the shape of a sculpture is determined by its surface area and its bounding box, these two will have the same cost because those surfaces and volumes are the same. The thermo result for both combined is 15%, delete one, the cost is 8%, delete the other, the cost is 8%, so their cost is the same. If we take a close look, it appears that their flex are the same size. But let's make some copies to get some granularity to be sure of our results. If you're unfamiliar with this technique, take a look at my first thermo tutorial where it's explained. The result is 7.2% for the sculpt with the negative edit. Now let's check the one with all positives. The result here is 7.1%, which is interesting. However, that's only 1.4% difference, and I'm inclined to believe that it's due to the slightly different method of construction more than anything else but you can come to your own conclusions if you like. In this video I showed you bounding boxes, the configuration and impact of color, and the ultimate importance of surface area on graphics thermal reporting, as well as an intriguing result for an experiment about negative edits. One more video about graphics thermo. I want to show you the expanded graphics thermo reporting and we'll bundle that with a discussion about the new play mode heat maps since both concern themselves with the impact of physics. But I'll try to stay on topic. That's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.